Hey, hey guys, it is me, Heather, and you're watching Chronically Heather. So if you watched part one of my gallbladder story, this is the part two that you may have been waiting for, and I will go over these things right here. Jazzy! Okay, so since I went ahead and told you what we're going to be talking about, I want to go ahead and set this up for just a moment. Um, this next part was recorded at the same time as my part one section, um, but when I recorded it all, it was like 35 minutes and I knew I needed segments of talking and things like this, um, so that's why I decided to separate it into two parts. So here we go. And the next thing that I did was did go in um, and have the pre-surgery con consult where they like take your blood and stuff. I don't think they needed my blood that time because I had done it um, so much like so recent to when my surgery was going to be um, but they just uh, talked to me about um, what I was experiencing, how I do under anesthesia. Um, I explained to them that I I uh, have nausea, really bad nausea after I wake up um, from surgery and so they always do the scopoli, I believe that's how you say it, the scopoli patch behind my ear. So just be aware of that, that if you are um, a nauseous person, uh, maybe a scopoli patch during surgery should be something you're asking for. Um, it stays on for I think about three or four days after surgery before you remove it and basically while it's on it helps you not feel like you're going to vomit everywhere and you just don't touch it because if you touch it and then like rub your eyes it'll make your eyes dilate and like really blurry um, but other than that that's like the only um, big thing that they that they're big on is just not touching it and rubbing your eyes like if you touch it go wash your hands when you take it off fold it up real nice throw it away go wash your hands yeah okay so uh, I did end up having surgery and it was March 15th of 2023 and here we go. So gallbladder surgery update. Surgery date 3-15-2023, check-in 5.50 a.m. Surgery started at 7 a.m. So very relieved that I'm home from surgery. I got in a good five hours of sleep once I got home. And now I'm up walking every hour to use the bathroom and to move around um, because if you don't know moving around is super important after surgery it helps keep you uh, from getting like clots in your legs and clots in your legs means that the blood clot can travel from a vein in your leg all the way up like into your lungs and cause a pulmonary embolism um, which is very dangerous obviously um, so I I'm sure it's that I'm always out and walking a little bit throughout the day because I am prone to blood clots, I guess. I have a MTHFR, MTHFR I think that's what it is. I have like this uh, mutation in my genes that makes it so I don't um, like process folate and iron super well and it makes me more prone to clotting, I guess. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's get back to this. So the anesthesiologist was awesome and recognized me from my last surgery from June 2022. She gave me something to calm me down once I was in the operating room and then I was breathing in oxygen through their face mask and suddenly I was waking up and recovering. And that was different for me. I'm used to them telling me I'm about to be put to sleep and there being some kind of countdown. Uh, usually it'll be from 100 when I'm in the surgery room or I get to like 97 and then I I don't know anything after that. Um, so I said I'm used to them telling me I'm about to be put to sleep and then there being some kind of countdown. But I'm glad it went the way it did because being in the actual operating room <laughs> really, really makes me nervous, which is super true. I was really anxious this time around. Um, my hubby, my husband, um, was able to be with me before surgery while I waited for my turn to go into the operating room. Um, but unfortunately he couldn't be with me afterwards in the recovering room because he, um, because he had to get our daughters from our friend's house and then um, they uh, my, my kids and my husband weren't allowed back together and he had to be with the kids so he couldn't come back to the recovery room 
um, the crappy part. Even though the nurses claimed beforehand that the waking up and recovery would take longer than the procedure itself to be sure I was okay, I was rushed through the recovery and discharge process and I left the hospital with a 9 out of 10 pain rating. They gave me so many pain meds trying to control my pain levels that I was literally shaking and trembling in my body. Even though I was hurting so bad that I was crying during the discharge process, going to the bathroom and getting dressed was horrendous. The nurse said that it was the gas pain and nothing could be done to relieve it except to walk it out. And, uh... I guess, I guess it could have been the gas pain and had a lot of other surgeries, but what it really was, was, uh, the incision up high. <laughs> I was not expecting it, and it, it's like between the rib cage, um, like up near the sternum, I guess, kind of, I don't know. Uh, but there was an incision there, and so it was like, <gasps> I couldn't, I couldn't catch my breath. It would constantly catch the second I would start to breathe, and it hurt so bad. Anyways, um, so I was surprised to learn that I have four incisions and one of them is right in the middle of my upper abdomen, like between my ribs where my actual stomach is. That one hurts the worst. And it feels like I have a large five inch wide rubber band squeezing my upper abdomen, which, which, which makes it really hard to breathe. So, okay, so like five, so it felt like there was just something around me squeezing me in when I was trying to breathe. So it wasn't just this point here, it was all the way around. Um, so it made it really hard to breathe without pain. The other incisions are just over my previous incision scars. Um, this one in the middle top area is a new cut. No scars there previously. And sheesh, it just feels horrible. Um, I'm hanging in there though. I'm just glad it's all done. The anxiety and worry are behind me and now I can focus on healing. Thank you to everyone who sent positivity and prayers and checked in. Um, so yeah, that was a really, really rough day. I remember I got out of surgery and I was, I was shocked at how much pain I was in. Um, I've had a lot of other surgeries and this one, I mean, I don't want to scare anybody, but for me, it was like one of the most painful ones that I've had. I don't think it would have been as bad if I didn't have the cut that, or the incision higher up. Um, and I, I really, I guess I wasn't expecting that one from what it seems like. I don't really remember, honestly. Um, but... I remember there were all these little dots all over my stomach and abdomen, like all over this area. And I never like found out what they were from. They look like injections. And I heard that they can do like nerve injections or like nerve blocks or something. I was thinking maybe during surgery um, that like gave me injections like in my stomach, but like nobody ever told me about it. At least if they did tell me about it, I don't remember because I was in recovery. Um, yeah. So. And so it looks like I went to sit outside on the 17th and that didn't work out. And I said that the whole sitting outside upright in a chair thing didn't last longer. <clears throat> didn't last longer than 12 minutes. My incision areas and abdomen began hurting and it got difficult to take in deep breaths. So I told my husband I needed to get back in the recliner and I said at least I got to sit outside for a little while, um, which was really nice because it was spring, you know, and you always want to, I do anyways, I love spring, so I really wanted to be out there to enjoy it and not be just stuck in the house laying in the recliner, um, miserable, which is a very uh, real thing that people experience post-op is like this post-op depression and just it's hard it's hard to exist sometimes anyway so um oh let's see shoot okay march 17th oh this is still march 17th um so i said i was getting kind of worried about the incision above my belly button 
all four of my incisions are sealed with glue. The one above my belly button is puffy red and bloody and appears to have opened to some degree. The other incisions are tight, thin lines that are clean and it's easy to see that they are closed. The belly button one is not like those ones at all. And I said hopefully it doesn't get worse and I heal quickly and properly. Um, Man, yeah, and then the rest of the time, the things that happened. I guess my belly button, um, I, I might have issues with my belly button a lot because I've had, uh, it's been cut open several times through different surgeries. So I think that just the nerves and everything getting cut open over and over, is just no good. So, a few days later, on March 26th of 2023, this would be 11 days post-op, I said, hey everyone, I thought I should probably check in since I haven't been on for a bit since my gallbladder surgery. This past Monday, I don't know what date that is, but I'll try to put it in here somewhere. So, this past Monday, I got really sick and was throwing up a lot. I got sick five different times and thankfully... It went away after 24 hours, but it really wore me out and even made my incisions bleed under the skin, bruising. Um, and I had new bruising under two of my incisions from my core being worked while puking. Last night when I slept, I woke up in a lot of pain as I found myself sleeping on my right side, the surgery side. And ouch, am I still in a ton of pain where my gallbladder used to be from sleeping on my right side. Um, so yeah, I was saying that from sleeping on my right side, it did cause a lot of pain where my gallbladder used to be. Because it was like pulling on that area when I woke up, um, in that position. It's because I was trying to hide and know how long I was on that side. Hopefully the pressure of me sleeping on the surgery site didn't do damage internally. Unfortunately, I feel like I have a relatively small but growing hernia at my belly button incision site, which totally sucks. Since I've had two hernia repairs done in that spot already. But since 2020, when my mesh was put behind my belly button, I've had three additional surgeries that required going through that area. I'm really hoping it's not a hernia. I can't even consider another surgery at this point. I can't even. Um, but other than all that, I'm doing better and better. Anyway, I just wanted to update my friends and family. Um, yeah, so I remember I had this bump growing right above my belly button and it was hard and it was tender and I was really worried that it was uh, a hernia or an abscess or a hematoma. Um, I think they did end up telling me that it was just like a hematoma and that it would um, go back in and it, like a month later it did. It took a while. Uh, but it finally went away and now I have a normal belly, normal belly button again. So the next and final thing concerning my gallbladder was March 28th. So this would be 13 days post-op. And I said, last night I was sitting in my recliner with my laptop. I lifted my laptop a few inches off my lap. I twisted to the left and I set it down on the arm of the chair. I felt an inst oh I felt an intense ripping and tearing inside my body near where my gallbladder was. Now I have excruciating pain when moving my arms too far from my body and when getting up and down. This is obviously me not slowing down enough. Why am I so frustrated that they seem to be blaming me for tearing an internal suture? Oh I even had explained to the nurse on the phone that I had been throwing up last week. So they could have easily damaged my sutures, the inside sutures. Um, I didn't do anything to cause this to myself. Also annoyed because the discharge paperwork didn't even have restrictions listed. So there was nothing like don't lift more than 10 pounds, don't bend, don't twist, etc. And usually my discharge paperwork is more detailed. Then they're going to act like I did something wrong. So I was really upset, um, and I, I guess I can put in some, like a picture of that. I know I took a screenshot of it, so I'll just I'll share it and I'll talk about it after this. Um, but yeah, I was really messed up that they were basically blaming me 
I mean, they gave me no restrictions and told me that I should be good to go within a few days after surgery, which is just so un unrealistic. And don't let them, like, gaslight you. You deserve the time off that you need to heal and you deserve a break so that you can heal properly. And if you don't give yourself that break and you don't force yourself to rest um, and, and limit yourself on your physical activities, then you might regret it. <laughs> you might not. I mean, if you have um, issues like I do and history with surgeries and a weak core and extra weight on you uh, and you're just not like the healthiest person, I mean, there's a lot of variables between me and other people and why I had such a hard time with the gallbladder surgery when other people don't. When I first got out of surgery, I was like, yes, I am hungry again. My doctor was like, uh, go ahead, just, just eat however you like after surgery. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to kind of take it like semi easy. And I was like really craving like, um, salting crackers and the peanut butter jelly swirl. Like, I haven't had that stuff in forever and I was craving it on salty crackers. And, um, so I was eating that a lot and then like soup, um, and crackers and stuff. And, uh, I don't know, maybe I pushed myself too soon, but then I got really sick and it was like a 24 hour virus. And I was just, I hurt so much after that. It was, it was incredible how much pain I was in after all the throwing up I did. So, yeah. Um, so it took a few months after surgery to get back to normal with eating and being able to eat the things that I like without having like a release of the bile. Just like. I guess fall down into the liver or whatever, which is uncomfortable and burns. Uh, I don't really get that too much anymore. It's been over a year now. So it's currently July 21st, 2024. And um, it's not really something I deal with very often. Uh, the worst pain I get now is an occasional like sharp pain where my gallbladder was. Um, and it'll, it'll just it's just not that bad. It's not, it doesn't compare to what it was before surgery. And it definitely doesn't last like a fraction of the time that it used to last. So, I mean, dealing with it for a few minutes at like a moderate pain level is so much easier than dealing with a debilitatingly painful, uh, you know, situation after eating pretty much anything. <laughs> so... Oh, and uh, another thing that I dealt with after surgery was um, diarrhea and upset stomach for a while, um, but that pretty much resolved and worked itself out over time. Um, but again, I have more issues now, um, so I can't say exactly what's normal for people who are healthy and well after having their gallbladder removed. Um, I have fibromyalgia. So I have like extreme tenderness and pain, uh, and I there's definitely something wrong with my with my stomach, which makes me uh, get sick and be nauseated a lot more than I should be. So I should probably have that looked into. But I don't think that's related to the gallbladder, honestly, because that was something that was happening before, and it's it's really been something that's been going on for quite a while so I, I don't even know when it began it's just like a part of my life to randomly feel sick and like I'm going to puke and then sometimes actually puking um, so it's just like part of my life but uh, it's nice that the diarrhea issue has pretty much resolved itself um, but also I take pain medication now which if you know anything about you know opiates and pain medicine then uh, you may be aware that it can uh, cause constipation and so I feel like between you know the diarrhea issue and the constipation issue that they just like balance each other and I just have like regular bowels yeah
Alright, thank you so much for watching and checking out my part 2 gallbladder story. I really appreciate you hanging around to watch. And if you like this video or found it useful in any way, please go ahead and press like and drop a comment and let me know what your thoughts are and what your experience is um, if you want to share anything with us in the comments. See you later. Bye. Oh boy.